Hello everyone, I'm Ruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded vehicles in the GTA Online Open Wheels class in terms of lap time. Now before we get into it, I need to explain that setup actually matters on these cars, with different wing options changing the downforce on the car. In general, high downforce allows for higher cornering speeds but gives lower top speeds, and low downforce gives higher top speeds but lower cornering speeds. Now, I have to have a framework in place for testing both lap time and top speed in each way, so I settled on testing at the two extremes and in the middle. There are hundreds of possible options for every car and it will of course be track dependent, but this should give a good indication of where to start for any given situation. There's a link in the description which will show you the effect every front and rear wing option on these cars has on overall downforce. In general, the further down the list you go for front and rear wings, the more downforce you have, but because it's Rockstar, there are some pretty big exceptions, like in some cases where the wing you'd expect to give the most downforce actually does nothing, so it's best to check. No other body part, apart from front and rear wings, have any effect on downforce. So as we see the R88 in 4th place, we as always have the position counter in the top left with the best lap time the vehicle achieved in the top right. This video only focuses on track performance, so if you're interested in top speed where braking, cornering and acceleration aren't relevant, check the link in the description for the top speed testing series. And if you want to know more information about this testing, including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally, have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. This video lists all vehicles and is correct as of the Los Santos Summer Special Update. For any open wheel cars added after that or other classes of cars, check the playlist linked in the second line of the description and feel free to check out my Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to support this work and get testing results of any new cars a little bit early. Now, unlike top speed, where it's pretty clear cut that maximum downforce means the lowest top speed, minimum downforce means the highest top speed, and any downforce value in between will give a top speed in between those two values, lap time isn't as clear cut. As we can see with the best lap time from the R88 coming from the middle downforce setup, with both maximum and minimum downforce setups giving lap times that are significantly worse, and the same story happens with our third place car, the DR1, which ends up only fractionally quicker than the R88 across the lap in the middle downforce setup. The reason that it isn't just a case of maximum downforce giving the best lap time is because racing circuits aren't all corners. There's straights in between the corners, so some balance is needed. In some cases, these cars already have enough cornering grip, even in a relatively low downforce setup, such that they can take most corners flat out anyway. So by adding more downforce, all you're doing is sacrificing straight line speed everywhere around the lap in order to go fractionally quicker in one or two corners. And that's why in all these cases, it's the middle downforce option that gives the best lap time. These cars do vary in terms of whether minimum or maximum is faster around the lap in a vacuum, just because they get their lap time in different ways. For example, the DR1 is unusually quicker in the minimum downforce setup because it has such a big difference in straight line speed and becomes so slow everywhere except a few corners with the maximum downforce setup. But they're all at their quickest when finding a happy medium between the two. So as we move into second place and see that the PR4 goes 3 tenths of a second quicker than what the R88 and DR1 managed, that means we already know what our number one car is. But how much quicker is it? Well, before we see that, it's important to mention that, as with everything, it's all track dependent. On some tracks, a better lap time will be gained by having slightly more downforce, and on some, slightly less. But very rarely will the best setup be maximum or minimum downforce, unless a track is 100% corners or 100% straights. It's why the 811 is rarely a good option for 99% of supercar racers, despite having the best top speed in the class, because its cornering ability is so bad that it's very rare to find a track with enough straights and such a small amount of corners to make it work. There may even be some setups that allow for slightly quicker lap times on this track too, but I have to draw the line somewhere since just testing in these three ways for each car already took me over 120 laps, and I have to repeat it all for top speed too for every single setup. It's like testing 12 cars rather than 4. But as you know by now, the king of the open wheel class for lap time at least is the BR8, and significantly so as well with a best lap time of 54.788 in the middle downforce setup, alongside having a better best lap in the minimum and maximum downforce setups than any other car's best as well. 
At this point feel free to subscribe if you haven't already for regular lap time and top speed testing videos and updates when new cars are released and check out other classes in the playlist. Now under 55 seconds is absolutely insane around this track for a car and even a BR8 with minimum downforce will still be quicker than the other three around the lap. However, the BR8 isn't the quickest open wheel car when it comes to top speed. You'll have to check the top speed version of this video to see what that is, but essentially it means that there's little point in having the BR8 in a minimum downforce setup since you'll have another car that will always be better for top speed. So you might as well tweak it to get the best lap time for any given track. I recommend starting in the middle and working your way up or down in terms of downforce depending on how corner heavy the track is. The more corners add more downforce, the less corners remove downforce. A general rule of thumb for setting up these cars would be to go for the lowest downforce setup that you can get away with such that you can still take the majority of corners flat out. In addition to beating every other car regardless of setup, the BR8 actually has the smallest difference between setups in both lap time and top speed. Some of this is because the front and rear wings simply aren't programmed to do as much with the BR8 as they do for other cars, but also because the BR8 when fully upgraded has the most powerful engine of any vehicle in the game, so it can essentially drive around any small straight line speed deficit that it might have in terms of acceleration when in a higher downforce setup. The curves boost which I used coming out of the hairpin for every car as that's where it's most effective was also a factor in all of this as well of course since it only regenerates when you're off the throttle or braking you actually end up regenerating more curves with the lower downforce vehicles because you can't take corners at full speed. That helps them to reduce the deficit that they suffer in corners even further when in a lower downforce setup. As a final comparison for this video we've got the DR1 in all downforce setups where it booked the trend by actually being faster with minimum downforce than maximum and that's because it goes so slow on the straights when downforce is maxed out that you don't make up enough extra time in the corners as you'll see if you compare them as they go through the lap here. And despite the BR8 clearly being the king I actually enjoyed driving the DR1 and R88 in their low downforce setups the most out of all of these vehicles and all of their setups. They were the only two vehicles where I actually had to do some braking and couldn't take most corners flat out due to their lack of grip and their higher top speeds because of that made them frankly more fun. Taking every corner flat out gets very old very quick and doesn't really lead to very good racing. But that should just about cover everything. I will be working on a follow up to my original F1 cars testing video which will delve more into the specifics of open wheel races like tyre wear and tyre types but that will all come later. I figured that getting the lap times and top speeds out is the most important since all open wheel cars can be used in regular races too. I'll link that video in the description as well when it's done and remember that the description is where you can also find the effects of all the open wheel wings as well as check out the top speed version of this video as well. I really found it interesting with this testing that as with most things in life a happy medium is the best way to go. So that's pretty much it with this one. I know it's taken a while but hopefully now you can understand why. Consider supporting on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to get testing results early and remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching, I really really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.